Welcome back. In today's Pro Build Series video, we'll walk through some of the essential calibration and tuning procedures that will help you get the most from your Pro Series CNC machine. Specifically, we'll cover leveling the machine table, squaring the gantry axes, and tramming the spindle. We'll begin by leveling the table. If you're re-leveling a machine that's already been set up, you'll need to remove your work holding and spoil boards. And before we get too far, let's discuss what we're trying to accomplish. While I'm massively exaggerating the effects here, the goal is to adjust the leveling feet such that both the axes become even better aligned and move along the exact same plane. It's not so much that we want the table to be level as that we want both sides, both axes, to be aligned. It simply turns out that Earth's gravity is an excellent reference for finding that common plane. To figure out if the table is adjusted properly, I'll use a long level and check the table on each diagonal. And once both those measurements read level, I'll know I'm done. I'll start with my 4 foot level and check and see where the machine's currently at. And right from the start, I can see that my shop floor is significantly higher in the back of the shop than it is towards the middle. Though the machine is already level side to side. So given this, I'll start at the back, the high side, and using my jack to lift the machine, I'll adjust the leveling feet so they are nearly all the way in. I'll leave the feet extended by a few turns, and I'll replicate that on the other side as well. Now I'll check that the rear legs are still level, and see how much the front legs are going to need to come up. It looks like I'm going to need about 3 quarters of an inch on the front. And rather than count all those turns on the front feet, I'm going to instead measure. And likewise for the final foot. And finally I'll go around and check all the sides and the diagonals and the cross members themselves so that's more for the benefit of the spoil board. And check that everything comes up level. And that's all looking really good, so I'm ready to move on to the next step. Our machines use a dual drive architecture, meaning that the gantry is moved by independent driven axes on either side of the gantry, Y on the left and the slave axis on the right. Their movement is automatically synchronized by our CNC control software and the line slave homing sensors. During a ref all home operation, both axes are driven until each detects its respective home sensor. Adjusting the squareness of the gantry to the machine table is accomplished by adjusting each of the sensors either further in or out. For most builds, as long as the sensors are installed the same distance, only slight if any adjustments will be required. To decide if and how much to adjust my Y and slave homing sensors, I'll first need to know how square the gantry is currently. I'll use a scrap piece of MDF and clamp it to the machine table, making sure that I'll be able to avoid them when jogging and running my test program. Other than a surface to test cut, I'll use a long construction square, a smaller square ruler, and from our CNC tool set, I'll be using one of the quarter inch end mills, and later on I'll use the half inch end mill for checking the spindle tram. I'll need at least two quarter inch dowels, or ideally four, and in a pinch you could use quarter inch shank tooling, though mine the sharp end, I'll also need a test pattern to cut. For this I'm going to use a test project file from the CNC router parts machine calibration instruction page. We have calibration test files available for Fusion 360, Vetric, and in CAD neutral formats such as DXF drawings. I'll download and use the Vetric project file. Opening the project reveals the simplicity of the test program. What it's defining is a square with four drill locations, whereby the outside tangent of each, when measured diagonally, will work out to a nice round and easily measured number. Drilling into the toolpath, get it, drilling? It's configured to drill quarter inch holes using our quarter inch end mill, just a bit over a quarter inch deep. Next, I'll post process this toolpath for use in my Pro Series machine using the Mock Arc Post Processor I customized in the earlier video. You can use that or the default mock post processor will do fine. Since this is my first time powering on the machine in a while, and I know I've moved it since it was last on, removing the spoil board, the first thing I need to do is rehome the machine using Ref All Home. If you haven't configured your machine for homing yet, 
check out our CNC software setup video. With the machine successfully re-referenced, I'll load the test drilling program, G-Code, into Mach 3. Next, I'll jog the machine to set the Project Work 0 G54 location. As is typical, this program work origin is the front left corner. I'll position the machine roughly where I'd like the program to start from, and rounding my current machine coordinates, I'll enter X15, Y5 as my G54 work offsets in the Offsets tab. With my quarter inch end mill secure in the collet, I'll place the AutoZ touch plate and use the Auto Zero script we set up in the previous video and press cycle start to begin the test program. With the holes made, I can now measure using quarter inch dowels. From outside to outside, I should get a value very close to 21 and a half inches on each diagonal. The first measurement looks spot on. And so does the second. And that's great, that means this machine is square. If you find that your test square has differing measurements, you can adjust a y-axis home or slave home sensor and rerun the test until you get a square where the diagonals are approximately equal. If you need to run the test multiple times, I like to mark the holes from previous runs so that they can't be confused with the new holes. For re-drilling this pattern, we can use the offsets tab to simply shift one of the axes by a half inch and leave ample room for the new set of holes. The goal of tramming is to verify that the spindle and tool are being held squarely to the table plane. We'll focus on the left to right adjustment here as that's the most common source of tramming errors. As you can see, the larger the tool, the more obvious even minor tramming errors will be, and the presence and shape of the ridges left behind from surfacing can tell us which way the spindle is tilted and by how much, roughly. And that's how I like to test tram, by surfacing a small test area with a larger size tool and checking for ridges. Back in our test program, I'll switch to the tramming test toolpath and edit it. I'll be surfacing my test board with a 1 16th depth with our half inch flat end mill tool. And I'll be using an unusually large step over, 90%, to ensure we see what the surface of the tool is doing. The program will run parallel passes along the Y axis, and this should give us a very good idea by seeing the presence of ridges or not if the spindle is out of plane with the workpiece. I'll generate the G code for this program and name it to indicate this one will cut along the Y axis as we check the spindle left to right adjustment. Now I'll change over to half inch tool and call it. First I'll loosen the call it nut and remove the quarter inch tool. Then I'll completely unthread the collet nut and replace the quarter inch collet for the half inch collet. I'll reinstall the collet and nut on the spindle. Insert my half inch flat end mill from our CNC tool set and fully tighten the collet nut. Finally, I'll auto zero the tool as shown previously. I'll load the Y-axis tramming surfacing test program and hit cycle start. For this video, I've left the lower frame off my dust shoe, which leaves me in a great position to recommend leaving yours on. The MDF chips are leaving me in suspense, so I'll clean up the board a bit and let's see what's under there. The surface feels very smooth, so I think this is a good tram position. Otherwise, if there had been ridges, I would adjust the spindle by loosening the mounting fasteners, removing the center locating dowel, and using a wrench to turn the eccentric adjustment until I felt I had tilted it enough. Then I'd reposition and rerun the surfacing program until I get a nice clean result. If you need to run this program multiple times, you can either increase the depth of cut or shift the program over. This program is approximately 5 inches wide, so I'll add 5 inches to my x-axis work offset and rerun.
Finally, I'm going to check the front back tram along the x-axis. This will tell me if the z-axis is tilted forward or back with respect to the xy plane of the machine table. I'm going to modify the surfacing toolpath I used previously to check the left to right adjustment and rotate the parallel passes by 90 degrees so that this time the cutter will cut along the x-axis instead of the y. I'll also update my cut depth so that it cuts a couple hundred steeper. This will allow me to overcut the same part of the MDF that I did my initial surfacing checks on. I'll save my G-code as before, load the program, and hit cycle start. If I had needed to adjust front back tram, I could shim either the spindle mount or the z-axis itself using shim stock or even aluminum foil folded over. Go to cncriderparts.com for more information on purchasing your own Pro Series machine, for sample files to help you set up your machine, or free projects to help you get started making things. Thanks for watching.